It was this guy, honestly, I'll tell you a story about this guy. It's the last <laughs> song. Here we go. Yes. So Max Max has to isolate with um with COVID, right? And like obviously I can't remember did you get it? Did you not have it? You were a close contact time. So you're out for one. No, close contact days. with K Pon, yeah. So anyway, so Max, like you, you no Max is no Max he does. You go on his Instagram, you go and doing loads of lifting and everyone's like, that's, that's brilliant. Man. You know, he's training so hard. Anyway, Max comes back on like the mon the Monday after two weeks out and he's like out of torn my car. He's, got, he's gone for a run the, the night before to try and get to like he'd obviously done no running Panic. He out of his mind. And he's gone for a, and he'd come back and torn his calf and honestly everyone was like, oh my god, Max, you've absolutely blown this. Like you were the only person to be isolated. You come back with torn calf and didn't play for like a month and a half. Everyone was like, what have you done? Oh, Max, is it true? Was it a panic run? Well those ones literally oh, like panic. twelve yeah. hours before you go in, like fuck I better get something in. <laughs> Trying to get some stuff in in a minute, yeah. Uh, hello and welcome to this week's uh, Rugby Pass Off Load with me, Mark Edwards, joined as always by Glasgow Warriors captain Ryan Wilson and a Dubai bound already there in Dubai. It's Max Lahif as well. We'll be later on joined by Saracens and England back row Ben Earl to discuss his career so far. And also preview the showdown too between Bristol and Saracens in March. But first, how is everyone? Oh, mate, I'm I'm jealous. I'm sat here looking at him in his room, smug as you like. Maxi, oh. where are you on the palm here? On the palm, big fella. Just just enjoying getting some bit D in the best kind of way. I was just sunning myself all day. Some, some tasty eats. Um, where did I go? I was at the five for most of the day. It was lovely, lovely. It looked, like a the comic wake up because we got on at like two last night and I had the munchies bad. Do you ever get that when you when you're traveling? So I was on delivery last night. Isn't it at like two in the morning? Yeah, it's very weird. It's very convenient, but um Dubai for delivery, by the way. But yeah, very weird. It's like when you travel with rugby and you literally have lunch at the club and they're like, right, on the bus to the airport, you get to the airport and you're like, everyone just starts eating again. And you're like, we've just eaten an hour ago. But it's just that thing yeah, when you yeah, get yeah. to an airport, you just gotta eat. So you just go again. Yeah, weird. So I was just full of hotel food and delivery and the plain food. It was it's all been naughty. But yeah, today I just sort of got back into it. I actually managed to get a little workout in. How boring oh, is that? Drop me out, Max. <laughs> Please <laughs> fucking hell. I oh, that I oh, see I can't stand that, mate. You've got to have a bit of time pathetic. off. You're pathetic. Yeah, I just got met the the uh, hotel um gyms there are, are very substandard for Maximus though. But I managed to get onto the to buy a treadmill and just get weird in there. It was like a goddamn soup kitchen. Right? See, that's not a holiday, is it, Mark? That is not a holiday. No. Go into the gym. First thing you do is hit no, the no, gym. No, no. No, it gets me right for the day. I'm high on the dolphins, ready for it all. You know how it is. No. You're one of these blows. You need Did you go to the gym a single on. time, Ryan, when you're in Dubai? No chance on earth. I, I, I don't. I, once I'm done with rugby, Boys, there's no Never reason again. for me to go to the gym anymore. I ab I hate that's how much I hate it. I hate the gym that much that I, I when I'm done, I'm just gonna oh god, can you imagine the nick of me when I'm done? Oh, oh it's gonna be outrageous. Like a yeah. slightly fatter Peter Crouch looking thing. Can you imagine it? Oh, oh. um no, no chance. Down. No chance I'm going to the gym. Um, let's uh, let's start with uh, Max, your gang smashing the skull. It's 52-21 to march into the last 16 in Europe. But uh, most importantly, how come you weren't in the squad? Oh, um, like it was resting player management vibes because I'm uh, obviously Carl's back with England next um, next week. Six Nations campaign underway in February. And um, I'll be back over on the other side of the scrum to hold down that tight head position. I... That's what I've been told anyway. So yeah, it was just a it was just like a resting thing to make sure I'm okay for the um the long campaign ahead. When you heard that, you didn't think oh, I'll try and get away a bit earlier then. No, because I was packed in at 24th man, so no no chance for that. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of fitness on the side. Yeah, I think Mike Phillips is trying to come over for a chin wag as well. I just uh, uh, Kevin Kevin Morgan was having none of it. He's like get running sunshine, and I was just stuck in the. Oh, is that right? Whereas I saw Barks at the weekend, like you see really the old bench after going to do the warm up, and we were just chatting in front of the camera. The camera was like, Can you get out of the way, please? And we're just sitting there yeah, yeah. Having, <laughs> having a good old yarn, and this cameraman's like, Please, can you get out of the way? 
There's a big, there's yeah. a big rule mark: no warming up in the 15s because the cameramen get very pissed off. And if you warm up in the 15s, you apparently get in the way of these corner cameramen. But 12 years, 13 years in the game, I still haven't learned the lesson. Right in the way of the camera the whole time. Max, apart from you, someone else who wasn't playing was Nathan Hughes uh, on a cheeky 500k. Yeah, he was loaned out to play for Hartbury in the Championship. He's now joined Bath until the end of the season. Um, how frustrated has he been by his lack of game time at Bristol? Yeah, naturally he's yeah he's been pretty frustrated. Um, just been tough. Like obviously Fitz Hard has come into that role um, and he's taken his opportunity with both hands. And then Nate sort of was a little bit battling for form when he when he was playing, um, as we all were to be fair. Um, and, but Fitz was sort of the bright the bright light in the back row at the time. So it's been difficult for um, Pat to sort of justify dropping Fitz the way he's playing. And uh, we all know what Nathan's capable of, like that sort of class and that sort of um, player. Never, you don't suddenly just become bad at rugby. So, yeah, man, he's he's a massive confidence guy, though. So, I think going to Bath, where they don't have like a out and out eight right now, um, I think he'll get plenty of game time and help them so much to get some go forward and like front foot or first phase ball and stuff. I think he's he's such a good player when he's on song, one of the best. But Ryan, sadly, you, you did, you know, your side lost at home to La Rochelle at the weekend. Um, firstly, why were you back on the bench? And, and secondly, what went wrong? This is sport, Mark. This is sport. And this is what happens in rugby is you, you can't be the creme of the crop all the time. You can't just be at the top. Sometimes it takes these little setbacks to, you know, guys are playing well. And you're out for 12 weeks. People play well. You've got to find your way back in that team somehow. And, that is my plan. I will try my best. But fair play to those boys. I mean, the back row we've got at the moment with um, Dempsey, Matt Fagerson and Rory Dodge, these young guys just tearing it up. Fucking youngsters. But Rory Dodge, by the way, that bloke's absolutely immense, Max. You won't have heard of him much, but he's in the Scotland squad. He's on fire at the moment. He's a seven. Oh, so I can say that. Um, but the, the back row's not going to change much, is it, now from Scotland? Uh, well, in terms of the starting lineup, yeah. Well, you, you I don't know. You, you'd hope Who's he's got a shot. Like honestly, honestly, Rory Dodge has been like standout player in the league this year. He is ridiculous for a young guy. He's only twenty one, and he's he? absolutely Eight. no. He's a seven. He's a seven. seven. Um, so it'd be nice to see him involved with Scotland in some capacity. I'd definitely have him in there somewhere. Um, I Maybe know how miss the Teflon Don, mate. Yeah, I know, I know, and. He's almost, I'd say, turnover-wise, he, he's up there like with some of the best I've ever seen. But he's one of these players that just, just on the spot, just manages to step people and off he goes. And he just breaks through tackles like you wouldn't believe. So, exciting to see. But yeah, listen, Mark, there's some youngsters there that are doing well at the moment. But this old dog will find his way back in. Don't worry. Don't you worry about me. So after an incredible weekend of high octane European rugby, you may be questioning when will be the next time we get to see such world-class entertainment on the pitch. Uh, well, fear not, the biggest domestic clash of the season between Saracens and Bristol Bears is taking place on the 26th of March at uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in what's been dubbed the Showdown 2. Uh, this epic clash uh, brings together two domestic heavyweights uh, packed full of international superstars to battle it out for supremacy in the heart of London. The entertainment will not just be restricted to 80 minutes on the field, however, as you can experience uh, a rugby day out like never before in one of the world's greatest stadiums, from drinking at the longest bar in Europe to witnessing innovative pre-match shows. This is an unforgettable experience for everyone, not just rugby lovers. Tickets and hospitality packages are available at saracens.com. Com. And to discuss this epic clash, we have, of course, our very own Bristol Bear in Max Lahif. And we're now delighted to be joined by Saracen and England international Ben Earl. Ben, hi. Thanks for joining us. Uh, how excited are you about coming up against your old pal Max on the 26th of March at Tottenham Stadium in Showdown 2? I mean, twofold. You obviously get to play your mates again or some of my mates, um, and then obviously an unbelievable stadium as well. So now it'll be exciting. Uh, I know the club's put a lot of work into putting it on again, which is obviously, um, which is obviously stopped for the first time around. So now nah, it's, it's nice to finally get a, 
get a date set and, and go and do it. I, I know Max has now prepared a special little preview to get us all ready for the incredible excitement which lays ahead for the showdown two. Take it away, Max. On March the 26th, 2022, the showdown two commences. The ferocious legions of Saracens will host Bristol's mighty bears at none other, none other than the majestic Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Rumi, a finely orchestrated lawn fit for a confrontation of this scale, a 50-50 split of the finest blades of vegetation and plastic. And need not worry if first quest quenching beverages are top of your priorities when watching the great game. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium hosts the longest bar in Europe. May the frothy beverages of Beaver Town Brewery fill your cup and the merrymaking be zealous. Not impressed. Perhaps pyrotechnics and other such wizardry on your bag. Fear not, they have that too. Enough FX to put a Michael Bay movie to shame. Stimulation. They're putting on a show for everyone and you don't need to be a rugby lover to enjoy this momentous day out. Ticks available at saracens.com. Very good, very good. Uh, just to say, Rugby Pass subscribers are entitled to an exclusive 15% off ticket by using the code THFC Rugby Pass 22 at checkout. That's THFC Rugby Pass 22 at checkout. So head over to saracens.com. How cool is that, by the way, playing at Tottenham Stadium? Has this happened before? I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. I, th I think a few boys went and did like an appearance the other week um, to do like a bit of like a promo for it. And they said the change rooms are like nothing you've ever seen. It's probably sort of like two 10 metre swimming pools just like to the side. So don't know, not many of our lads can swim, but other than that, it'd be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? I suppose you see it on that. Um... Have you seen that Tottenham? Yeah, the all or nothing. Yeah, yeah. See, they've that's got the, the circular change room, haven't they? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, that would be so good. Who gets the home change room? That's I hate to say it, but you know, the, we are. Yeah, we've got. Yeah, yeah. Got, be as, as we're putting the show on, I thought that might yeah. be us. Like that was just <laughs> poor byproducts of hosting, I think. But you guys have post. Uh, have you played at Wembley with Saris then before? Yeah. So we did like when I first joined. I think we did one Wembley. And they had like a three-year deal. And then we've had it at the London Stadium where they did the Olympics for the last couple of years. And we've always played Quinns. And it's always been a bit of a weird one. Like, it's obviously always a good day out. But it's like the first game out after the Six Nations. And like a couple of the Six Nations boys are like shattered. And they're just thinking about how quickly can they get to Cancun in Mexico or something. And like the crowd's like 150 metres from the side of the pitch. And everyone's just kind of like... Is that, a, is that a rugby player I see there or are we just watching Ants play? Like, <laughs> if you're up in the gods. So, um, so now it'd be nice to get into like a, it's a pretty cool stadium and I've only been there once to watch the NFL. So I'm excited. Am I right in saying the, the pitch is like raised or something, isn't it? it what, yeah. So like, I think you can like slide out the, I'm pretending like I'm, a, uh, I'm like the genius. <laughs> you're this. an ass. I, I mean, I've done loads of research and whatever. But now they could, I don't they have like the slideable NFL pitch underneath so you can just like slide it on and off. Oh, oh that would be so cool. That would be so cool. And that'd be so good. They've got like an app as well. We're getting completely off topic here, but they've got you can sit in your seats, right? And on your phone, you go on the app and you can order beers to your seat and they bring it to your seat and like stuff and like food and shit. Oh my and God. stuff. You can even order merchandise from the shop, like Tottenham kit, and they bring oh, my beers food. to you. How or Sari's that? kit, obviously Sari's kit, obviously. Yeah. Sari's stash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sari's stash. Brilliant. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> well, it promises to be an amazing day out. Max, uh, Ben, obviously a teammate of yours last year. Now he's the enemy. Are you looking forward to going to battle uh, against Ben and also uh, Max Maylands? Um, yeah, no, I, both two of my favourites. Absolutely gutted they had to leave. Um, ben was like the most articulate sapper ever, but like in a good way, you know, like in a constructive way it was really fun to listen to very gifted very gifted and then obviously max malins was very mysterious kept himself to himself a precocious young man very talented but very private but yeah great lad great lad lovely bloke as well um but last the first game of the season when we played um the series ben was loving it because obviously they they got the they got the dub they got they got on top of us it was a tough game series were all over us and Benny uh, was flying into the boys, weren't you, Ben? Who are you sledging? <laughs> I felt so You were going I did, I like so hard. <laughs> I, I mean, I listened to the ref mic 
to like I was I was like I will I'll I will leave no qualms. I was on one. I was so revved up. Yes, you were. You, like I'm usually like okay. Like I'm not usually like too much into it. But like the moment I got off the bus at Ashton Gate, I was like, I'm not talking to anyone from Bristol, or whatever. <laughs> anyway, then the game started and like I couldn't believe what Bristol were doing. They were playing like Saris, and I was like, this is brilliant because there's no way like gonna out we've been we've been doing this for about the last six years there's like very slim chance gonna out Saris us so like that happened and then we just kind of like yeah like you said got we grew into the game yeah and it got to about 40 minutes and we had like a massive scrum penalty and I literally stood over the scrum and just went <laughs> and like then I looked up at the bench and there's Jan Thomas staring at me saying like I'm coming for you and I don't know if you guys know but Jan Thomas is like the best boxer, I reckon the best boxer in the premiership, not that that's a, like a well-known trait or whatever, but you watch this guy boxing, you're like, I'm never getting a scrap this book. And I like walked off and I was like, oh, I actually think I'm going to have to quiet this down because like <laughs> if he comes on, he's actually going to take my head off. Um, but no, yeah, I was seriously on one. I did, <clears throat> I did feel a bit bad. So I did stay in Bristol afterwards and like have a night out and try and amend some friendships. But like, yeah, it was a, it was actually a really good day for me personally, but yeah, it was um, it was a long, long memory. Even like, see, even before the game, see, like in the warm up and stuff, did anyone try and come over and sort of? Uh, no, nah, like a few boys like come up and like try to say hi, and I was like, I literally was just like, um, <laughs> blanked them, fucking. I literally that. was. I was just, <laughs> that's by the way, that's really not normally me, but like, I was yeah, you so, love me, like, you. I, I'd like come in with this like narrative that was what I was going for. I just stuck with it. And then afterwards, I was like, I'm not actually sure I did the right thing there. But anyway, it, yeah, it is what it is. And like I saw, I mean, you guys had your, your social on Sunday and I just dipped in for one um, and saw all you guys. And I did apologise to a few of the boys. <laughs> after. I was like the longest, the long, most long overdue apology of all time, like six months later. But other than that, yeah, perfect. Oh, Was so anyone good. from Bristol giving it back to you? Oh, yeah. Like, I was, do you know, what? I was so happy that Carl Sinclair wasn't playing because, like, he'd have, he'd have, like, hated it, and like, we'd have probably just forgot about the rugby and just started shouting at each other. But no, um, I got, I got my fair share back as much as I did um, from as much as I gave. But actually, it was quite nice actually. So I was getting low heat from the Bristol boys, like, on the pitch, and then you'd hear from the fans like, "Come back to Bristol," and I was like, "Well, you know, like, <laughs> conflicts of here. Like, I don't know. Like, do they want me back? Do they want me back?" But no, it was nice. It's always to be fair. It's always been nice. Like even when we when we had the few games at the end of last season when we had fans, like the fans are un- unbelievable. And to think that like they'll probably come on mass to London for that weekend will be it'll be pretty awesome. Do you miss Ashton Gate? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Although I like, I would say the best time, ironically, the best time I played at Ashton Gate was in September, that first game of the season. So because um, that was the first, like one of the first games of like no restrictions. Um, but just even like, I think we had our Gloucester game, which was like third last game of the season before the playoffs. And like, that was half full and it was still like so loud. Um, and they're like awesome fans. Um, the area is slightly different though. When you're, cause where we are in Surrey's like, you can go out in London, you can go about and do your business and no one really like, no one knows who you are. So it's actually like, which is actually, a good, believe it or not, a good thing. You go out in Bristol, you go for a coffee and you've lost to the weekend. Everyone's like, yeah, I, I, how I can imagine it being like a, a footballer in like a proper footballing town. They're like, what happened the weekend? Mate? You were dreadful. And I was like, right, okay, perfect. Like I threw an inset pass that, that weekend. And like, they're like, that pass was never on. And I was literally like, I forgot you were playing as well, mate. Like, I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Honestly. So yeah, like I, the fans were brilliant, but like, where we were living, it was just so, it was all Bristol. When like, you'd walk around, you see a Bristol shirt, whatever. So, which is awesome because obviously it's growing the game. But at the moment, people live in a rugby town, they think they're all like, they've got a PhD in, in rugby. Do you know what I mean? So they're like, they've all got an opinion. Yeah, that's the double edged sword of good fans. I agree. It really it is. Yeah. Exactly. It tells you how, what, the, what the crack is. Yeah. It's <laughs> Do you boys live together? Did you? I lived with, I lived with Max. Yeah. And like, we were on like a strict, um, I mean, Lee will tell you this, like we were on like a strict thing where like we basically weren't allowed to go and do anything. So we're literally in this in this town. We became professional gamers for like six months. It was honestly <laughs> unbelievable. We train, come back, have like a quick moan about whatever, have a quick, and then be like, 
I'm going to jump online. And then we'd be on that till like half nine, eat and then go to bed and then we'd do it all over again. Honestly, it was the most like out, no like life outside rugby at all. So, but yeah, it was an interesting experience. Did, for he, sure. did he have his uh, weights rack in there or? Uh, no, it was Mac, Max. Oh, Malin. sorry. No, Max, Max Malin. Sorry. Oh, Malin. sorry. Right. No, you... Max the Heath. This guy, honestly, I'll tell you a story about this guy. It's the last. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. So Max, Max has to isolate with um with COVID, right? And like, obviously, I can't remember. Did you get it? Did you not have it? You were close contact, something. So you're out for what? No, close contact days. with Cape on. Yeah. So anyway, so Max, like, you, you no know Max is no Max. He does. You go on his Instagram. He's going and doing loads of lifting, and everyone's like, that's, that's brilliant. Like, you know, he's training so hard. Anyway, Max comes back. On like the mon the Monday after two weeks out, and he's like, oh, "Pat, I've torn my car." <laughs> he's, gone, he's gone for a run the, the night before to try and get like he'd obviously done no running. Panic! He out of his mind. <laughs> he's gone for a run, and he's come back and torn his calf. And honestly, everyone was like, "Oh my god, Max, you've absolutely blown this! Like you were the only person to be isolated." And he come back with the torn calf and didn't play for like. A month and a half. And Max, was like, what have you done? Oh, Max, is it true? Was it a panic run? Well, those ones literally oh, like running, 12 yeah. hours before you go in, like, fuck, I better get something in. <laughs> trying to get some stuff in in that minute, yeah. What do you enjoy? Like, which, uh, so what aspects of Saris to compare the aspects of Bristol, like the two teams, which, what what, do you, what would you chop and change? Would you enjoy? Um. So let's start with Bristol. I definitely enjoyed like the way that they play the game. If, an, if sometimes it was like massively infuriating, like it would be pouring down with rain and like at the beginning of the game and Pat would just walk in and be like, brilliant. It doesn't matter to us. We can just catch and pass. Same as always, isn't it? I'm looking around and being like, I don't know, mate, it's pretty well. <laughs> I wouldn't mind chasing some kicks here. Um, and like, obviously the training facilities were like, well, they were the best I've ever, I've ever been in. Um, and like the boys were awesome. Um, getting to play with, the likes of, you know, to name a few, Charles, Semi, like obviously the headliners, like and they are by by and beyond like some of the most special talents I've ever played with. Like they they can do things that I've never seen and probably won't ever see other people do. Um and obviously where we lived, we lived in Clifton Village, um, and it is like such good fun. And there's so many good like pubs and you know, although I'm saying that you you go out and get spotted, there are some nice secret drinking spots you can go there and, and have a quiet one after the game which is always good um, in terms of Saris like obviously I'm biased I've been there since I was 14 I mean I've got to be careful what I say because obviously Ryan you know bays for Saris blood but other than that um, <laughs> I would say like the the actual team feel around the club is like is unbelievable and there's some moments there that you're like this isn't how it's meant to be, but it just just the way it is. Um, they have a saying at Saris, which I'm sure people know, like you you work unbelievably hard and we treat unbelievably well. And that is like that is like so true in every walk of life at, at the club. Um, you know, we have, I would safely say, one of the worst facilities in the league. And, you know, people seem to just get so much energy by like we get like a new like dumbbell in the club and everyone's like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. And, like you're looking at like <laughs> boys who have like won everything in the game like we get excited about our dumbbell because that's just like it's the little things that we sp speak about um but yeah like uh, like so for example we spoke about before that bristol game um you know how we were like frankly underdogs and we like absolutely love that we love like the scrap the scrapping element of it like we'd rather win ugly than win by 50 points in a way like that's so much more telling for us the team um I mean, there was one, there's one memory that I have, Saris, which is when I was a bit younger and I just thought this was amazing in terms of summing up the club. So we were on like an eight game losing streak. I think we'd just, we'd just been pumped by Claremont on this memorable Monday night in like deep snow. Um, and that racker had scored something like four tries, maybe even five, like freak of nature. No one laid a hand on him. So we come into the meeting the next day and they're like, right, big team meeting. And I'm thinking, this is like crisis meeting. I did one of my first ever games on the bench. I was like, Oh my God, I'm part of like this memory of like, I'll probably never get picked again. Whatever. We sit around this room and Mark McCall just stands there in silence. Right. And then he just, the, all the coaches just walk out and it's all the players left and the players just go like, you know, what's going on boys. And Billy turns around and goes, boys, I know what the problem is. We haven't been on the piss together for a couple of weeks. And so, Everyone stands up. They knew this was going to happen. Bill was teed up to say this. Everyone stood up, got in their cars and drove into, into the centre of St Albans. 
and they booked out this bar for us and we sat there for an hour like over an hour and a half just drinking they had like loads of beers lined up and we're just there drinking away this is on like a thursday afternoon right and uh um i don't think we lost the game again until like may when like they put out all the week all the week boys so like honestly it was like the most mental thing like we're sitting there. I was expecting to have, be like have an absolute hair drying treatment, and then the, the thing that came out of it, like, the worst thing I got out of that was a headache the day after, and then like a disgusting hangover. That was like that's, that's like, the way. That, I is, that is how it should be done. That is like yeah. that is how it should be done. I'm so envious of that. Like, and that's mm. one thing I can't stand with COVID at the moment. I don't know what you boys are like. It's been a little bit more relaxed down down in England, but like it's just absolutely hammered socials up here. Like we cannot do anything. Anymore. it's got it's got a bit better recently but that whole time through covid and we travel away obviously we we fly to most places so when you chart a flight well nine times out of ten they're coming back straight after the game yeah Whereas, so you can't even stay around like we play connor in galway this weekend they were like the best weekends ever because you, you, yeah. you were playing connor and you knew you were going out in galway after for a pint and it was unbelievable whereas covid's just fucking ruined all of that no no it's honestly, it's mental. And also, like, it's also the guilt side of it as well. Like, you're like, should I be telling people that we're going out for beers? But, like, I'm like, the rest of the country. So we might as yeah. well, like, do you yeah, know what I mean? It's not our fault that we play rugby alongside it. Like, Have you boys got any um, mental trips planned away anytime soon? I remember last time you, you played us up here, you went skiing or something fucking after. Yeah. Game, um, ski. So we were meant to, we had a week off uh, about two weeks ago. And we were meant to be going to an Austrian... Uh, I think we were going to go to like a St. Anton version of somewhere. Um, but that actually got called off because they closed the borders. So um, a few of us ended up going to Richard Barrington Stag Do in Tenerife, which had its, um, which I would say was incredibly insightful with like how, you know, it was like a four day trip. And I think I learned more about these lads in four days than I did in like the last like five years of being at the club. But honestly, it was unbelievable. I'm pretty um, sure that's where I got my. I got some messages from boys that have played at the club before and Sean Maitland sent me one from yeah. there saying, good luck on your time. And he looks so ropey, <laughs> like walking in the sunshine somewhere. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> like, it, was, it was unbelievable. He was there, yeah. <laughs> um, but I actually, I've, I've heard there's a rumour that um, we might be going to Chicago with like the women's team in pre-season. So that, 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 we'll see what happens with that. But if that is the case, that would be, that would be quite a good fun. Right, let's move on to uh, Max's book club. Ben, this is where Max reads a passage from a player's autobiography. And you and Ryan have got a guess who wrote that book. Last week's was terrible, by the way. I had zero clues. It better have something in it, like a f- accent or something this week, Max. Uh, you'll, you'll, I think you'll get this guy. Right. It might be a bit before uh, Betty's time, but here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Personally, I love Gavin's company. I used to visit him at his house in St. Bride's Major complete with mirror, gym and sunbed that he shared with his ex, Charlotte. More often than not, the karaoke machine would come out. Granted, he's not everyone's cup of tea, but I thought he was great for team spirit. He was different, and I like that. Strutting around in his silver boots with his tan and good looks. You need characters like that in a team. And he was a model professional when it came to looking after himself. He turned up to training with Tupperware boxes filled with chicken or eggs and would eat the contents in his car at lunchtime. I've always prided myself on my diet, but this was next level stuff. Like the rest of us, Gabs would sometimes undo the effect with alcohol. However, we once had a pre-season trip to Loughborough with the Ospreys, and at the end of a hard week of training, decided to have a night on the town. We were absolutely steaming. Some of us, including Gav, threw up. The next morning in a dehydrated state, he stepped onto the scales to be weighed by Hugh Bevan, our strength and conditioning coach, a daily ritual during camp. Hugh was horrified by what he saw. Gav had lost nearly five kilos. Another time back in Bridge End, the police stopped us on our way into town. They'd spot us the six of us in the car, three in the back seat and a fourth stretched across their laps. What on earth, the officers asked, did we think we were doing? And that moment, the perfect timing the boot popped open, revealing Gav inside. Gavin actually made us all fall in love with grooming. Even Tom Shanklin started looking orange at one point. My pre-game ritual normally included half an hour on the sunbed, followed by a spot of hair removal. Such a, <laughs> such a behavior might make some frown, but there was definitely a psychological element to it as far as we were concerned. Look good, feel good, play good. 
That's what we used to say. And I definitely felt like I played better after a good shave and a nice tan. <laughs> can you can you do just because I want to hear it? Can you do the last <laughs> sentence in the accent? I know what it is, but I just want to hear your Welsh accent. Hey, yeah. All right, all right, mate. Look good, feel good, play good, bye. <laughs> Perfect. That's all I wanted. Now we know it's definitely a Welsh person. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Right, so usually... So he's from Bridge End, and he played for the Ospreys. Yeah, and he was mates with Gavin Henson. And he mates Gavin Henson. See what I mean? See what I'm working with here, Ben? And he, and he uh, played out, he played for Ospreys, and he was also in the Tom Shanklin era. And he also, like, looked up, he also looked after himself then. He was quite mm. tanned, yeah. looked after himself. His smooth set of nuts. Yeah. Smooth set of nuts. Um, smooth set of nuts. <laughs> It's hard, isn't it? See, this is. Um, I'm trying to think where uh, we obviously played for Wales and Ospreys. You said in camp, and the bloke I'm pretty sure was the SSC coach of, and he's got obviously he's got a book out as well, Ben. That's... I'm thinking like a Sh- like a Shane Williams, but like I don't like I don't think he had, did he play for the Ospreys. My my knowledge of the regions is not is not as good as Ryan's it probably is, um, or should be. Um, I think right. We've done. We already had Andy Powell on, haven't we? Yeah, I was thinking that as well when he was like talking about the car thing. I immediately thought Andy Powell in that golf cart. Yeah, Andy Powell. Um, it's not Tom Shanklin. It's um, uh, right. Is it? Is it? Um, is it a back? Yes. Mate, oh, fucking backs that play for Osprey back play, in the day. Um, what, but is he, he still playing now or not? No, 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 done that, done that. Very, like, was really, was was a pre premium, like, world-class player in his day. Oh, um, the nine. Who was the nine? No, not, well, not Phil. You're a bit Mike Phillips. Mike Phillips. No, we've done him as well. Yeah, we've done Mike Phillips as well. Um... I'll go, I'll give you back. He was a back, back, in the back three. Oh, Lee Burn. Yes, yes, there you go. <laughs> so good. Oh. That's a, that is a good one, actually. That's exa- everything we've said there, like, kind of buys into that. What we yeah. just said, yeah, yeah. That's cool. 2009 Lions, isn't he? Star, there he yeah, is. Rugby and Hodge, yeah, 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 podcast, North. son. <laughs> so good. That's a, that, by the way, that's about the limit of my rugby knowledge. It stops about that. That was my first, like, proper exposure to watching rugby religiously. Oh, that was good. Hey, who was else good. Who, who, who beats a lot? Carl so, Sinclair, Sinclair loves a beat. Carl Sinclair, big on the beat, yeah. The and beat. Uren at Bristol loves a beat. Oh, he does too. Purdy sometimes. Mate, He's Adam Hastings man. lasers his leg hair. Adam La- Hastings lasers, lasers it. Lasers, Adam Hastings, lasers. Sp- the Spider-Man. You see that? What? No, oh God. God. what? This <laughs> is so... Well, no, it's not that funny. But, like, there's obviously a thing going on at Gloucester. It's like the, they, they beat us at our place just after Christmas. And uh, I like I like Haste. I play golf with Haste a bit, um, and like, he's actually a really nice guy. But then I like, put this thing up of him, Charlie Chapman, and Reece Samet, like doing this like Spider Man thing, and everyone was just like, like, like "We're already buzzing for the next stuff again." Boys are like, ba- like baying for it. So like, <laughs> big oh, uh, yeah. But imagine that laser in your leg here. That's another level, isn't it? I don't yeah, think he's big on V. Uh, sorry, if you, if you do, so it's like one of those times you do something like that. Like, it's tough. You, you're, you're creating a narrative for yourself that I don't think people really want. If it's like <laughs> Owen, if Owen or like Maro come up to you and just start like getting into you, know, you know you've done something pretty bad. That's like it's a big thing. Would 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 Maro pull you aside for something? Like that? I could definitely see Owen Farrell's pull, pull no, you like it. it's not. By the way, it wouldn't be one of those like pull you aside. It would be like in front of the lads. Yeah. Like, What's that on yeah. your legs? And you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> where have all your like, leg hairs gone? <laughs> yeah. Or like you like we pr- Sarri's pride themselves in being the best <laughs> feedback team in the world. And by feedback, it just means everyone's like, if you come in with like some sort of audacious haircut everyone's like you're looking good eh and like everyone's you're like they're not like, <laughs> you're reaching for like the nearest beanie you're like yes yeah, sweet cheers mate. That, that is a big Sean Maitland move yeah exactly <laughs> you're looking um, good yeah you're looking <laughs> good eh <laughs> um, yeah so like but like it's not 
He don't Loz tries it every now and again, but I think only because he's such a beautiful man, I think only he could probably get away with it. Alex Zofsky. And he's also like he buys into the whole footballer, you know, oh, I used to play football, so I'll I'll shave my legs. That's just how it works. Oh really? Fair, got you. Fair, metro. Fair play to him. Um yeah. Kick goal to be fair. But no, yeah, V Sing is I think I don't think I think it's the only way it's allowed in rugby is if it's like tape like because to be fair, yeah. some boys do get like quite bad oh, okay. effects and rashes from tape. That's the only time I think it's acceptable. Agreed, agreed. But that's the, that's the excuse they love to use, isn't it? That being said, Max, like on Sunday, you had your shirt pretty much very you questionably exactly, buttoned down. You knew exactly what you were doing. Like, Max, there's you not definitely, a you definitely body. beat your body. I'm <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like here, like four. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, God, I I'd probably look a bit dumpy. And I'm looking over Laheef and he's got like this shirt open. I'm like, hey, it's literally a de- one degree outside. Yeah, true. There must have been a bit of grooming going on for, for those budgies to be worn at the drive <laughs> today, mate. There's no way you have any old spider legs hanging out the side of them. <laughs> a rough, a rough bit of orchestration, lads. Not yeah. the same as just but yeah, just nuking your body with the <laughs> Of course not. Uh, you were sadly left out of the England squad for the first round of matches for the Six Nations. Did Eddie give you any advice on what he wants to see from you to get back into contention? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty... Uh, yeah, no, he did. We, we were on... Uh, it's, it's an interesting one almost with Eddie because um, if I talk about, like, with the Autumn Internationals, so, like, they, they announced the squad and I, I wasn't in it. So I was like, OK, but sweet I haven't, had a, haven't had a phone call but like I'll just plug on and then he rung me like two days later and, and told me I wasn't in the squad and I was like you know what I, I, I know I, I, the, the thing's been out for like two days but we had like a good chat and whatever and like he's he's an incredible man manager in the way that like you have these conversations and you come away with it like so clear but also like it gives you so much confidence even if you're not in the squad which is you know he doesn't he doesn't get that kind of um I don't know, praise or like that kind of image in the, in the media, but he's actually such like a, he, he, he makes you want to go and do that. Like immediately it makes you really energized. Like you could be dropped in, in the case of myself and a few others. And we've all come, come away from being like, I actually feel really good about where my game's at. Um, maybe it's just one of those ones that you're like easier to speak to when you're not in the squad than when you are almost. Um, and I've certainly had, I've certainly experienced that on the, on the other foot. Um, but yeah, so I've got some clear things to work on and um, kind of looking forward to, to starting that like journey again, I guess, of, you know, you always, you always start thinking, oh, there's a chance, there's a chance and you don't get picked and you have to kind of build yourself up again. So, um, so no, it's, it's, it's always a good challenge, I think. There's no room also for the um, Vunipola brothers, Elliot Daly, Alex Zazowski. Um, how have all those lads taken being dropped? I mean, we say talk about like being drops. I mean, R- Ryan, Ryan and Max will know like things in rugby can change so quickly, and there's such like a big perspective on that in terms of those guys. Um, I mean, Elliot now, what well, proof and pudding is now Elliot's now in the squad, although wasn't three days ago. So like, there's another example. But I think with Billy and Mako, is it like it, it would be an issue if they weren't picked and they were playing badly, but. Um, I don't, I don't, they won't mind me saying this. I think they've been playing unbelievably well and they've been, you know, key talisman of our return to the Premiership. Um, and then myself and Alex Lozowski is slightly different in the sense that, like, you know, we weren't really that, um, you know, obviously I, I got a few caps over the last, like, 12 months, but we weren't really ingrained in the squad. So it's kind of a different challenge for the, for all of us. But everyone's been so enthusiastic to kind of, you know, prove prove people wrong both media, coaches, whatever. So it's just a good place to be. And obviously it's great news. Selfishly, it's great news for the club as well because usually we're used to not having certainly two or three of those players that you've just mentioned there um, not available. And now we've got them and now our team looks completely different. And, you know, it's an exciting block for us now where, where it used to be a block where it was like survival mode. It's now like a block where we think we can um, make some big strides in the league. Um, in terms of England's back row options, you know, Sam Simmons, Alex Dombrant, both uh, scoring hat-tricks over the weekend. Alfie Barberi's arguably been one of the most informed back rowers uh, in club rugby. If, if you had to pick the, the starting back three, who would you go with? Um, 
are they, are they all fit? Because obviously Courtney, for me, Court uh, like for those who have played Courtney, I know Brian and and um, Max will have both had, and Tom Curry probably in the same ilk. You play those guys, and like I'll safely say, like they they are two of the best players in the world. Um, and so those two like pick themselves, if I'm honest, and the way they go about their week and um, and prepare for a test match is is inspiring. Um, and the way that they train, the way that you have to train um, with Eddie and with England is forces them and forces you to get on board with that. Um, so I guess there's kind of one position there. Um, hey, just on Courtney Laws, what is he like? Is he like in the week at training, absolutely melting blokes, or is he? See, so Courtney, like, so like. Courtney's a weird one. So I've only done a little bit with Courtney because he was injured for my first Six Nations, but then afterwards he was back. So like Courtney's always like, oh, I'm really, I'm really sore. Like he's obviously, he's obviously been doing it for, for as long as, you know, as long as anyone really, um, especially at the highest level. And then, you know, like almost like we'll get into what they call the game training, which is on the Wednesday. Um, and it's like the most brutal session I'll, I'll ever do. Like it's a full game and the rest. And then like, Someone will just catch Courtney like, like it'll like someone will, like sharpshoot him or like he'll get like a little bit of a, like a sting and then like you're like oh no and then he is just like a man possessed you know like I I don't know if no one caught him like if he'd go through that session doing all right like chilling but then like always of course you always like there's always someone who's like oh, takes it too far a bit keen or goes for a jackal when there's not really live breakdowns everyone knows the ones um, and then like it's just like a switch and you're like oh my god and then he's just like gallivanting around just trying to smoke lads and I'm like this is and he's never on my team so I'm always getting fried by him as well it's an absolute tip on tip on yeah (laughs) literally like that get that away (laughs) so yeah he he is he is like he's proper and obviously Tom Curry is you know in your probably in your world back pro at the moment or certainly has been in the past and then I guess the spot for one more and let's say they both play six and seven (sighs) I would I would pick Don Brandt. I think he has been certainly since the autumn. Um, I'd say he's been except exceptional. I mean, his like lines of running is is awesome. Um, and like you always think with like Don Brandt, like oh, you know, eventually he'll get found out. And he just keeps evolving, keeps evolving his game. Um, he's certainly probably brought a bit more defensively, which is something that like we've all had to like do as we've as we've aged a bit more like in terms of developing into a like a premiership, actually a mature professional. Um so I would I would go Don Brandt. I just think Simmons is such a a weapon to have on the bench. Um I mean I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for like a six two. He, he Eddie likes a six two split on the bench, have Simmons and Barbary or Ludlam, um one of those two and just let them loose at sixty and carve up like that that you know Simmons is like an absolute freak in terms of speed and strength and power. So um yeah, I think that looks a good team to me. And Ben, you've played for England 13 times so far, making your debut against Scotland in 2020. What are your memories of that day and, and how loose did things get that night? Uh, memories of that day were, it was like a whirlwind. I've spoken about it a few times. I don't know if anyone remembers watching it. It's probably the worst game of rugby around. Um, you, you wouldn't like show like a neutral that, that game in terms of like, it wasn't one for like the fan. Um it was like, what was it? Like hurricane, it was hurricane something or storm something. Oh, and it was like, yeah, woke, yeah. Up in, woke up in woke up in I'm oh, sorry, in Edinburgh. I looked out the window. It was like the nicest day. I was like, this is brilliant. Like, honestly, I, I couldn't go better. By the time we started the warm up, honestly, it was like sleet coming down the side. I actually felt more for the fans than I did for the players. And then like Ryan and Max will know, like if you're a young player or you're making your debut, like coaches being like, Playing for a coach is all about trust. Like, if the coach trusts you, you're going to get more of a dig. Got to about 50 minutes, and I was like, this weather, like, I wouldn't even put me on at this point. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, this is like oh, a mate, proper up. This is like a proper arm wrestle. Stop, start. The boys aren't even shattered because, like, it's like, you know, play for 20 seconds, someone knocks a ball on another scrum. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm probably not going to get it. So I'm like quite nestled into this seat. I've got like, I've got all the layers, it's freezing cold. And then all of a sudden, like, I thought I was dreaming, like, Richard Hills are ringing me up, like, aggressively, like, waving me down. And I was on with him. Oh, please, no. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm literally like, I'm literally like, well, hang on, Richard, I've got about 19 layers on, but do you mind if I just quickly rip them off? So I'm literally, like, (laughs) trying to get these trousers off. And I'm, like, trying to work out where my parents are sitting. And, oh, it's actually mental. And then I got on the pitch, and then I'm like, it's almost like you, like, breathe a sigh of relief. Like, 
I'm on, so they can't really take me off now. I've got the I've got the cap. But then obviously we still have, this game was still like massively in the balance. I think it was like 12 9 to us. I think we might have even potentially been down. And then Genji scores that pick and go try, and the game's kind of over. And I was like, that is the quickest 20 minutes of rugby in your life. Um and then and then yeah, the night itself was mental. The night itself was very good, but the morning after all the trains had been cancelled because of the storm up for, and like basically we were all meant to stay over and then the team were like oh my gosh we might not be able to get back so all the team flew back the night before and you could stay if you wanted to and I was like I'm never going to make my debut in Edinburgh again I'm staying like don't care and a few guys had come up to the game and the morning after not only was I like dusty as hell but I could we couldn't get a train for the life of us so we ended up renting this like um people carrier we were like we were ringing up. We were so desperate to go. And we were ringing up Edinburgh taxis being like, how much to take us to London? And they were like, nah, no chance. So anyway, we're getting up, getting this people carrier. And, you know, this was like at the beginning of COVID. My dad like couldn't speak. He was so ill. And he turned out he had COVID at the beginning and none of us got it. So it's one of those stories. It's like, oh, that weekend, but that, yeah. So it was, it was, it was unbelievable, but it was like, I almost remember it more for like the like the, the unable to get home bit as much as I do the debut. And I was like, yeah, it was, but it was a great weekend. I think he died of hypothermia that night. Yeah. And out on a night like that in Edinburgh with that rain. I remember I was yeah. always, and I was meant to come back to Glasgow and the same thing. All the trains woke up in Hamish Watson's room and he was like, oh no, don't let Cricket know you're in here. <laughs> what, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, it was a good day and like, it's, you know, it's, Ryan will tell you like when you make your debut like it's just like you never you can forget all the rest of the 12 games but like I'll always remember that one um, so yeah do you uh, Ben do you ever think with the competition ahead of you as a back row you you, you might be better off uh, switching to rugby league I know you've mentioned thinking about uh, the switch previously um yeah I mean um what's the <laughs> yeah definitely I'd like I'd, I, at some point in my career I think that I would love to give it a try um, if the opportunity arose. Um, there was actually an opportunity for me to um, do some training with the Leeds Rhinos this summer, just gone. Um, but it just didn't work out. I think they had like a cup final and they were like, rugby league was really hit badly with COVID, like right in the middle of their like season. So it just didn't work out. But at, at one point I was going to go up there for, for like a, a week and a half and just see if I enjoyed it. Um, I love watching it and I love, I'd love, I'd like to think that I'd, I'd be all right playing it. So, um, so yeah, it's just something that like I'm interested in. If the opportunity ever arose, I'd give it a go. But as long as I'm here and enjoying it, um, I don't think I will. Um, but yeah, like it's something that I, I love watching and probably, um, you know, I'm always up early watching the, rub, the rugby league in Australia when, when, when it, when it's on. And uh, sadly, that is all the time we've got left for today. A huge thank you, as always, to Ryan and to Max. And thank you so much, Ben, for being such good value on the show. And good luck with the rest of the season. We will see you all next week.